I'm Ryan Merkin, and I'm the VP of Business Development for Block Power. As the VP of Business Development, I am developing projects. I'm talking with uh, potential customers and clients and working with existing clients on developing a project uh, or working on a, an existing project. But essentially, I'm helping our team and our clients size up what should we focus on? I've got a building, I've got needs, uh, I've got equipment at the end of useful life. What is this electrification? How can Block Power help me uh, navigate through the legislation, regulations, and uh, you know, payback calculations for doing an energy project? And what newer technologies or things have we not thought of in the past that maybe Block Power, who specializes in this in electrification, that we can bring? To a building and make make a retrofit work. Uh, so every building is a little bit different. The needs of an owner is is very different. So we have to you know put on our it's a little bit of a building therapy and kind of walking into um, every situation and then we're figuring out how is it going to work, what's the practicalities, how constructible is it, and what is it that the owner needs that is going to find compelling for us to offer to them through our design build process, basically. Yes, my journey to block power. I studied meteorology in my undergrad, uh, but had pivoted towards a, a math degree, funny enough, but I had always followed the weather and that lent itself towards climate. I went back to school and studied climate change science and policy and living in the New York area in New York City at the time I quickly realized that the biggest impact that I could have to impacting the climate crisis was working in buildings and energy efficiency and so I, I cut my teeth doing energy audits about 20 years ago when I entered the industry so really seeing the underbelly of buildings in New York City and what makes them work and how they heat uh, buildings and how they produce hot water. It was it was eye opening to see these systems and kind of marvel at how it works and also just the huge opportunity there was to save energy for for building owners um, and that we had solutions for energy efficiency and things we could do right then and there uh, to make buildings perform much better. So. That took me uh, into a career of doing energy consulting and working on retrofits, doing audits, evaluations, and buildings large and small, working on new construction and trying to find all the novel ways to have buildings perform better and to be able to convince building owners and their occupants to undertake projects to do that. So block power is, you know, over time, it became apparent to me, and I think now to, to most people, that energy efficiency is a real critical piece of everything we do. But if we're going to get to where we need to be, we need to make more holistic changes to buildings and change out systems by converting from fossil fuel systems to uh, electric systems or providing electrification opportunities via heat pumps. And so I really loved that Block Power's one of the central focuses is on that aspect that we need to make this big leap and we need to encourage and build projects that take this this last step, uh, which is a big one and is a daunting one, but it's also the, the necessary one. That is a very good question. I don't know if we have enough time to go through all of it. I do teach a, a three hour course uh, with CUNY once in a while to help folks understand the law and, and its implications. But it's a, it, it, was, it was a very exciting, groundbreaking legislation that passed many years ago uh, that set forth performance-based targets for, for buildings above 25,000 25, square feet or greater. So while buildings have been benchmarking their annual energy consumption uh, for, for many, many years, now that we're in 2024, this current performance period for this year counts. We're live with Local Law 97. So when we go and tally the building's performance for 2024, 
just after the new year, we'll know what buildings are going to be subject to a fine for not performing at a certain level. So in the beginning of Local 97, in the current phase that we're in, 2024 through 2029, the targets are pretty achievable by just about every building, unless they haven't been paying attention and they're going to get dinged. But there are a lot of lower cost things that can be done for these buildings to bring them into compliance. Once we get into the next period after that, which is in 2030, a majority of buildings, as it stands now, based on current benchmarks, will be seeing fines from the DOB. So that, you know, that might range from 25, 50 cents to a dollar a square foot. So it starts to become very impactful. And building owners have time right now to start planning for what's coming in 2030. And they may even have needs now in 2024. And just note that this is an annual thing. So this is being tallied every year. If you're in compliance, you're good. If you're not, you don't have fines, but it's no, you don't get to rest on your laurels if you've, if you've passed the threshold because you'll be judged in 2025 and 26. And as time goes on, the performance requirements are gonna get harder and harder to meet. And that is essentially gonna lend itself towards eventual electrification of buildings. So there's only so much energy efficiency and emissions reductions we can get out of fossil fuel systems. There's an eventual encouragement towards electrification because the electricity coming from our grid will get, will have more and more renewable sources up until perhaps a hundred percent renewable grid. So everything will come into focus for electrification over time. And we start slowly now, but 97 is live and it's, it's actually very exciting for us energy geeks who have followed this for a long time, waiting for 2024 to happen. So we're in it. And I'm, I'm excited to see how the Inflation Reduction Act plays out. This year, there is a large pot of money that is coming to all the states. And we'll see that money deployed, whether through block power or others, but we are gonna see you know big changes to, to buildings uh, to make electrification move forward at a rapid pace. One, one particular project type that I'm, I continue to be excited about is replacing package terminal air conditioners. Uh, it's also known by the acronym of a PTAC. So these are typically systems that have had lower first costs that have gone into a lot of buildings, uh, not just unique to, to New York City, the New York City area where I live, uh, but all around the country in residential as well as in hotels. We've uncovered or in working with some of the manufacturers have some really great package terminal heat pump solutions that could fit into the same footprint of a PTAC and provide a, a real uh, a real reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, save cost, save on maintenance, and make for a much better uh, quality experience for residents or for, for a hotel guest with a, with a much quieter, better operating system. So we look to deploy that uh, in, in a real meaningful way. I'm Ryan Merkin, and I'm part of the brain power at Block Power.